It's time for the sandbox news. The new dev blog for November is here. There's a ton of new, interesting stuff in it. There's a new eye shader. If you look closely at the character's eyes, they look slightly more realistic. There's a better parallax effect going on. It's kind of hard to see here, but it looks more 3D. There's also realistic pupil dilation. Depending on how bright the environment is, the character's eyes will get bigger or smaller. It's a tiny little detail, but it adds a lot more realism. The publishing wizard has been updated. Now when you go to publish an add-on, there are a lot more settings. You can add tags and more easily update the description and summary. The uploading page has been updated, so it actually shows you more detail. However, there's one thing that I don't like about this. With the old system, you were able to write up the change log describing what changed in the update while it was uploading. But with this current system, you have to totally wait for the add-on to finish uploading before entering the change log, which can take a long time if it's a big add-on. It's a little annoying inefficiency, but I'm sure it'll get worked out in the future. There's a new citizen height scaling experiment. This is in the game and it allows you to change the height of your character by actually making the limbs longer. Previously, if you wanted to make your character taller or smaller, you'd have to resize the entire model, also making them wider. But this new system allows you to only change the height without making the character fatter or just small like an ant. It looks a little strange, but it's a cool, interesting feature to have. There have been some improvements to ambient shadows. So if we look closely, there are improved contact shadows using ambient occlusion proxies. Now I believe they're directional and they're a bit more realistic than the old shadows. There's also better high quality reflections. They look pretty similar to the old high quality reflections, except I think the old high quality reflections have been broken for a while. So apparently the system is more advanced and more optimized. There have been a ton of VR updates. VR has been fixed now, it actually works. Previously, VR was full of bugs. For example, the debug overlay didn't work, decals didn't work, render hooks didn't work, nothing worked basically. And there were a lot of bugs related to VR inputs too. Those have all been fixed, and there's new fixed foveated VR rendering. Now, the wording on this one is a little confusing. I'm pretty sure Sandbox did not have foveated rendering before, and instead this fixed means it's in a fixed position, which is kind of very strange, I think. So usually what foveated rendering does is it uses eye tracking in VR headsets to determine where on the screen you're looking, and it will render that part of the screen a higher quality, but it keeps the rest of the screen a lower quality. This allows for a huge boost in FPS with no noticeable difference. Again, the wording is kind of strange here. It's not very clear what's going on, but I'm pretty sure what's going on in Sandbox is it doesn't use eye tracking, and it only is based on the center of the screen. So maybe if you turn your eyes and you actually look towards the edge of the lens, it might look lower quality. Although I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to take a peek at it in game and see if it's noticeable. It's very interesting, but if it isn't noticeable, then it's essentially free FPS, which is huge because the FPS in Sandbox is awful. It looks like they said hopefully next month they're going to focus on increasing FPS for the regular game. Because currently, you only get 20 FPS on the default Sandbox game, on the default Construct map. It's kind of, it's really bad. Facepunch held another hack week this month. A hack week is when people go ahead and make basically anything they want as a test and to try something new. This game, Juicebox, was made. It's similar to Jackbox where it's a online party game. A live streamer could open this up and players could enter on their computer or their mobile devices and answer questions and everyone would get to rate them and laugh at the responses. The pictures that we've looked at are just concept art. However, there was a proof of concept demo made where you could connect to different rooms and enter your name. Then you could answer different questions and see everyone's responses. 
It's very crazy, very exciting. Now, this was just a test prototype experiment. It's not actually publicly available and you can't use it yet. There is another new fun Hack Week game. This is called Rogue Moji. This is a 2D roguelike game where it uses emojis. There's not a big description or much known about this. You can't play it in game. It was just a test experiment. And finally, during Hack Week, there was also a C-sharp shader experiment. This was a test to see if it was feasible to make shaders in C-sharp. Now, the benefit of making shaders in C-sharp is that it's a lot easier, but this was just a test experiment. It's probably not going to get implemented, at least anytime soon. That's it for the hack week. Next up, we can see Sandbox has been updated to .NET 7.0, so that introduces a few new coding features. There's new clothing and hair. We've seen all of these already, except for the new bicycle helmet and bomber jacket. We can take a closer look in the clothing editor. This is the bomber jacket. There's only one skin for this. And the bicycle helmet comes in three different colors. There is the regular black crate helmet, the camouflage helmet. Ooh, where did his head go? You can't see it. And this white with a black checkerboard and a lot of graffiti on it helmet. So it looks like it says rebar, real speed demon 10 out of 10 and there's like a, a w on here like what's up there's a lot of other minor little details on here that's very interesting very crazy there's new runtime materials i think i mentioned this previously but we can now create materials through c sharp code i'm not entirely sure to what extent we can use this i don't know if we can apply actual textures to this or only solid colors. That'd be something interesting and cool to look into. There's been a lot of work going into figuring out crashes and improving stability. So it looks like Sandbox crashes less often. That's crazy. FacePunch also has new internal performance tools. So this is anonymous performance data showing off how long it takes people to start the game. It looks like some people it takes over two minutes to start the game, but some people it only takes four seconds. So they can use this data to more accurately figure out what is causing issues and how to fix them. We've seen the improvements to the package API. These are just miscellaneous improvements to how add-ons are handled. This includes all the new menu updates and the new ability to actually filter by tags. There's better window docking support. So if you click and you move around a window, it's actually easy to dock them where you want them. Previously, it was very difficult to actually arrange windows how you wanted them to be arranged. So this is a great improvement and I'm really glad that we can actually arrange windows properly now. The Hammer Asset Browser has been updated. Now by default, Hammer will open the new Asset Browser. Now this one is still work in progress. It's really bad from a mapper's perspective. It's perfectly usable. However, it's missing a lot of quality of life features. So it just takes a lot longer to actually use this for mapping than it does the old asset browser. I'm sure over time, this will get improved further. So it's actually better than the old legacy asset browser. However, for now, I definitely recommend you sticking with the legacy asset browser if you want to work on your maps relatively efficiently. You can find it under view, toolbars, and then you can open up the legacy asset browser. One day, I'm sure this new browser will get better. However, it's just not there yet. There are new runtime particle snapshots. This is a very rare secret hidden feature. It allows you to create more advanced particles. Here we can see a little demo. They're using this to conform the particles to the actual dynamic geometry of the level. Technically, you could have created a similar result in the past. However, it would have been a lot more time consuming. And finally, we have the runtime add-ons. This is the add-on list where you can just select add-ons and they instantly spawn in in the game without having to pre-download anything. You can see here, he's spawning in a bunch of NPC zombies that I made. It's crazy, it's so realistic. Ah! 
Look out for the NPC zombies! And that leads us to the dev blog summary. Next month, don't expect a whole lot to get done in Sandbox, it's Christmas. However, it looks like they're planning on completely ripping everything apart and breaking every single Sandbox game and add-on. So it's kind of annoying, however it needs to get done if Sandbox is going to be good. And that's the whole point of having this early developer preview. Anyways, that's it. That's all the Sandbox news.